Hey everybody, how are you today? Thanks for checking out the video today. I've got the Two of Wands as the obstacle and the Five of Swords as the opportunity. Let's start with the Two of Wands. We got we got some decisions at the beginning, the beginning of a, a journey of creativity. Maybe you just got an idea. This isn't this card, but the preceding, the, the Ace of Wands. You got an idea, you got... It's not even an idea necessarily. It's like you got this, you're inspired. You got this feeling, right? You got the feeling. And now you're like, okay, I want to I wanna get started working on this, this feeling. Where am I going? What am I doing? And I kind of feel like this, this first step, this is... This is a this is a misstep. This is you're you're stopping you're stopping to think about things. You're stopping to try and get an idea, try and get a plan going. This is this is pretty useful in in some situations. Um, in this situation, it's like this is an inspired inspired creative urge. It's, it's about movement and, and passion. Um, it's uh, this the standing still. This isn't really the ideal thing to be doing right now. Um, now, it going on, going on this sort of creative journey, following following your inspiration. It's it has a lot in common, metaphorically speaking, with leaving leaving the home, leaving the the comfortable place. And going outside, going into the wild, going into the forest, going going into nature where all the civilized, predictable things aren't there. You're going into new territory. I mean, after all, if you got an idea, if you got this, if something new has inspired you, chances are it's it's unique. It's it's uncommon. If if this is the hundredth time that you've gotten the the same inspiration, uh, you know, are you are you really? Can you really claim to be inspired? Generally, when you feel that, when you feel that feeling of being alive, and oh, holy shit, your eyes just open up to, to some some new thing, like some new pursuit, some new passion. Usually, it's a brand new thing, and as much as that's really exciting, stimulating, it's stimulating because it's new, and the, the new things you don't have a map for. You otherwise they wouldn't be new, right? So, with this, it's like you're you're kind of not letting yourself go out there before you kind of formulate some sort of creative interaction with something smaller with something a little safer with something a little bit more predictable and i would say in this case that this is an obstacle this is a mistake that the thing that you should be doing is going out there now this this could also symbolize making the appropriate preparations like if you're going camping you don't just you don't just go as soon as you have the idea. You you know, you you want to pack, you want to plan how you're going to get there, what you're going to do. But in this case as an obstacle, this is like you're you're getting way too comfortable. You're you're kind of getting settled in when really you should be moving, heading out there. In terms of creative endeavors, um, creativity creativity interaction kind of passionate interaction that the wands symbolize this happens out there it happens in the wild and it happens amongst other impulsive creatures or at least what feels like impulsive creatures but it happens publicly and socially and i think this is often one of those first paralyzing stages of a lot of artists where they they make that decision they start thinking oh, i'll just i'll just kind of do things on my own for a bit I'll just practice on my own Th then I'll expose my artwork to the public then I'll start that dialogue between my creativity and and the world right um, but yeah I think this is a, I would say this is a mistake I would say that as much as this this is a this is something that requires you know significant courage that none, nonetheless it's 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 of value to embrace going out there and the uh the next character the next sort of situation is this character of the page of wands 
and I think this is someone this is someone that you could potentially look for to inspire you to get out of that comfort zone. The the page is this is this archetypal individual who is who is out there pursuing these these moods, these flights of fancy and you know they, they kind of they don't really know what they're doing yet. They're out there, they're out there looking around, but they're out there. And they're getting into maybe they're getting into adventures, maybe they're maybe the world is getting the best of them or taking advantage of them. Maybe things aren't always working out, but nonetheless, they are they are these kind of optimistic adventurers. They're kind of like the fool in a sense, I think. But I think that I think that looking towards one of these individuals to help you to help you just embrace that kind of outward outgoing attitude to to have something have something to to look at to relate to be like all right this this is how it's done these people when they go out there and they do this they're not going out there with this full confidence of you know because that's that's often the thought that keeps people inside again metaphorically speaking is the this this false belief that they'll they'll just practice what they're what they're inspired to do they'll practice it on their own and then they'll reach the state of mastery and then they'll bring it outside you know Miyamoto Musashi the arguably the greatest swords fighter that ever lived he had this thing where at the time usually samurai were trained with these wooden swords right and he and he scoffed at the practice he said that if you get good at fighting with wooden swords, then that's what you'll be. You'll be an expert at fighting with wooden swords. And as soon as the real swords come out, you'll <laughs> you'll have no idea what the fuck you're doing, you know? Um, so I would say resist that urge. Look to that kind of page of wands individual. Now, it's also important to note that just because you're looking at the page of wands for inspiration, for guidance, let's say, in an archetypal sense, doesn't mean you want to become them permanently. They, they are just a step along their journey. They're the kind of people who, they almost thrive on that bumming around hobo adventurer lifestyle a little too much. They don't have, they don't have the, the vision or the goal to pull them beyond that. Hopefully you're, you're trying to get somewhere further, right? So um, take advantage of the kind of relationship that you could have with, with that archetype for now to get you out side and just doing things but also don't linger in that stage you know i think all of these all of these stages should be looked at as a as a progression so the goal of each one is to to transition to the next essentially keep the sequence going and now on the opportunity got swords five of swords this is i see this as a as a political as an active political card the five and the seven, I think, are the the political ones. This one, I think, deals with the kind of political contests that happen between people that are that are generally centered around things of the earth, tangible, tangible things. You know, so much of politics is about how will we allocate the tax dollars? Why is this, why is the rate of these crimes, this percentage is different in these, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of statistics, a lot of numbers. Um, in, inversely, the kind of politics we'd be talking about in the seven would be like, what are, what are our morals? What are our values? What are the visions? What are the, you know, the virtues? It's not focusing on the, on the worldly and material things, more on the more politics organized around the abstract. We don't have that many of those kinds of politics right now, or certainly in terms of um, the, the mainstream political arena. You know, there's lots of politics in in schools, in academia, about, you know, where a certain idea is going, whether we want to go there or not. But, uh, but yeah, I think this card depicts, you know, a contest, contest of the minds in this political arena. And I think that the opportunity here um, I described it as, you know, outmaneuvering your opponent, your opponents with overwhelming facts. And, and that's not it because already the, the, the contests, the political back and forth will be happening about numbers. It's generally a numbers oriented 
political, you know, competition, but specifically um, facts related to them, facts related to your opponents. And, and I mentioned, you know, in the short video that this is not a tactic I particularly admire, but it is what it is. If it works, it works. It's, it's kind of, uh, you know, it's sophistry. It's like win, win the argument by any means necessary. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people that are experts are experts in that field of numbers and, and things, you know. Um, they'll, they'll talk about the, they'll, they'll make arguments as to why something should or shouldn't happen based on, you know, the facts on the ground, so to speak. Um, the opportunity, you know, to defeat them in, in debate lies in becoming an expert of the facts related to them. So instead of arguing with them about the statistics on the ground, it's like how many times they have failed, when they had failed, what kind of predictions they made and how off their predictions were, those types of things, right? And it creates this illusion, which I, I think is depicted fairly intelligently in the in the weight card, as opposed to, I mean, you know, the, the Marseille card. We got this sword still sheathed, you know, ready to go possibly. But um, yeah, I think that I think that if you're if you're getting into debate with a person who is uh, who, who's going to be arguing on the basis of the facts of the ground, if you go after, you know, their track record, their character, just by the virtue of appearing neutral, like, I mean, unless they've also done their homework and not only are they an expert on the facts, you know, of the things, but they also know about you, but um, sort of s switching, switching gears, changing levels, going up that one meta level and, and arguing about those people and their feelings if you're the kind of person that nobody really knows anything about, and maybe no one really knew anything about those political opponents either before you started really illustrating who they are and how much of a failure they are, comparing a failure to someone you know nothing about makes that person you know nothing about seem like they're actually probably successful and they got a good winning streak. Or, you know what I mean? It's That's, that's, the, that's the subconscious intuitive kind of feeling that often people get. So I think it's interesting that in the suit of in the suit of swords, it's the defeated opponents that are dressed in in yellow and one of them has the white boots. So we're, we're looking at the color of intellect, the color of swords and air and the boots are white and order. So like these people of intellect and of order are getting defeated by this guy whose boots are like flesh color that's like the, the common it's just the the realm of humans and then green and red we're looking at like wands and pentacles like this is a guy who is a man of action and you know not necessarily the accumulation of wealth even though that that could be it um coming across like not a failure could make people think that you're successful and that could apply to you know financial matters but coins, pentacles, you know, they also describe your physical appearance, the, the value of your, your attractiveness, your kind of, your socio-political cachet. Um, so I think this card does a pretty good job at, I think, hinting at that, capturing that possibility. Um, but yeah, so not one of my favorite, not one of my favorite uh, opportunities to take advantage of. Um, now, if, if someone else is, is also being a sophist, if someone is trying to push an agenda that is clearly just, d clearly doesn't have good intentions or, you know, sometimes displacing, displacing a tyrant in the making with sneaky moves, you know, does, does that justify, do the, uh, do the, do the ends justify the means? I'll leave that up to you to decide, but yeah, the opportunity is here. Um, and then also in, inversely, the consideration of, you know, be, becoming aware, paying attention to the fact that, that this is a tactic, like, you know, you're not the only person who's potentially thinking about this or who has thought about this. Um, this, 
this also happens being aware of it. Um, often the kind of people who get defeated in these kinds of debates, you, you know, they, they can't switch gears. They don't know what else to talk about if not describing the numbers and the statistics, right? So it's like they almost can't defend themselves from uh, from an attack on their character. Um, so that's also something that you could preemptively prepare yourself for. But yeah, the opportunity here is to go up that meta level. Um, that's it for me today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Drop me a like if you did. Comment hashtag free reading if you would like to be entered for uh, into a draw for a free reading at the end of the week. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.